Hello everyone and welcome to Artists for Everyone. Ralphie's here. Ralphie, say hi. Maybe not. But anyways, I wanted to show you something really quickly. This is this is my altar in my studio and mostly it's just so many beautiful objects that I bring in from the outdoors. And I have this vase here that's carved up wood that's so beautiful that um, a friend gave my daughter. And in it, I have a big collection of twigs and sticks and dried flowers and leaves and things like that. And I use these often um, when I'm painting birds or um, using sticks or twigs or branches in my, in my artwork, and I use them as my models. So I just wanted to show you that. And you know, there are ways that you can bring nature indoors that make your house cozy and um, but they're also really great things to use for your drawings. Um, I have all sorts of things here. I've got pottery shards from archaeological digs I was on, acorn cups, this beautiful big log, and then there's a branch with lichen and moss on it. Um, and it changes, you know, I, if I end up using something over and over again, then maybe um, I'll switch it out and put something else out. So I'm always bringing nature indoors. And we're actually going to use some of my twigs today in our lesson, okay? Okay, so here we are. And what we're going to do today is we're going to draw a twig, a little portion of a branch, okay? And we're gonna paint it. And we're probably not gonna do the entire length of it, but we're going to do it um, to like right below this little knot here so we get that detail in and so we're gonna start I'm gonna start actually by talking about my materials and for the drawing I'm gonna be using a number two pencil that's a mechanical pencil and a point zero three okay and you can get these at the drugstore any kind will do it's just a number two pencil mechanical Point zero three. I think at the drugstore you can get three, fives, and sevens, maybe even nines. Three is nice. If you can't find a three, five is also fine. But these are nice because they're constantly sharp and they have this really fine um, point, which is perfect for this. Because we're not only going to be sketching the twig, we're also going to put, be putting some details on it once it's painted and dried. Okay, so I have a number two pencil. I have a kneaded eraser, which is really important. I'm going to knead it a little bit to clean it up. This one has about seen its day, but still good. And then I have my beautiful Artists for Everyone palette from Wildthorn. Um, I have information about this palette in the description box. And also, if you don't have this palette, I have um, substitutions for you that you can use. And we're basically going to be using just a, a few of these colors that are almost in every watercolor set. All right, so we have that. And then... I have a glass of water. I have a little palette here that I'm going to use to dilute my paints. I have two paint brushes. I have a number four pointed round and a number two pointed round. These are both synthetics from Princeton. The um, I think they're the yeah the Glacier series. I don't know. They're just they're just nice. They're pointed rounds. They're synthetic, and they're perfect for this. So size two and a size four. Any small pointed round will do. When our subject is small, it's easier to use a small brush. Okay, we have more control. Um, and I have a little napkin to wash, um, to wipe my brushes on, and I have a piece of hot press watercolor paper. So you can also use cold press, that would be fine. I find for any kind of botanical work or anything where I want really good texture and detail to show, hot press is better, that's my preference. I know artists who only use cold press and they get just as much texture and detail. So it's just what you're used to and it's also what you have. So any kind of watercolor paper. This is size nine by 12, um, which gives me plenty of room to draw my, my branch. So I'm actually gonna turn it portrait style. Move it over here a little bit. <coughs> Excuse me. Um, I'm gonna set my branch down on the paper. Okay, sort of maybe this way. And I'm going to use it as my guide as I draw, all right? 
So when we're drawing things like that, it can sometimes seem overwhelming to draw a big shape like this. Even though it's small and narrow, it's still large. And so we get a little nervous about it. And really, there's no reason to be. If I put my branch down on the paper, I can mark where it starts. You know, I can even, I can even put it over here and just sort of give myself guidelines. Like it starts here and here. This is where the crook is, the top of this. Um, you know, and just sort of mark, you know, the, the, di the just with little dots, kind of the, the shape of it. Then I can move it over. So we're just going to take it bit by bit, okay? And we're going to start at the top. And I'm just going to draw what I see, all right? I'm not worried about it being perfect. I just want to make something that looks like a branch. I might use this to put a bird on. I might use it to put in a vase with flowers, you know, in a painting. So it can be used for so many different things. So really, I'm just trying to get the likeness of branch. And I'm taking it a little bit at a time. And I'm just sort of moving my pencil back and forth because you'll notice that the texture of the sides of branches is not perfectly straight and smooth. There's a little bitty jag marks sort of. And so I'm just moving my pencil along, skipping along kind of, <laughs> and trying to look at where it undulates, where it tucks in and where it kind of moves out. And just trying to keep it similar in size and shape, okay? So I've made my tick marks. I know I need to sort of move this way. So I'm just drawing this line to here. And then I'm going to mimic it with this one. And this branch comes out a little bit here. <coughs> Excuse me, I'm still got such a cough and cold. Okay. So now I'm going to take this up and sort of mimic the shape that I see. And this is just basic. I'm not putting any details in. I'm just making an outline. And I just do one little section at a time. Because, you know, branches usually have little sections like this. Okay, so if I were drawing this branch, I would do this section, then this section, then go to this one, then go to this one. And I can take it in these little chunks so it doesn't have to be so overwhelming. So now I'm to this point here. And from my perspective, I see it sort of dips in. And then I see this line that kind of comes up and then comes down. And then it bows out a little bit. And then there's this circle, this orange circle. And the circle gets a little bigger around it. And then there's this moss. And I'm just going to leave that area like this. Okay, so there's a little moss there. I'm going to leave that section for later. And then I'll just pick up again. And I'll start drawing down. Light touch with my pencil. little kind of moves out a little bit <clears throat> sorry <clears throat> and here I kind of got this dark line that kind of comes across comes down but I'm gonna start back up here before I do any more so see how I'm just doing one side at a time Taking my time. <coughs> I'm so sorry. If I was a fancy editor, I would edit those out, but I don't know how to do that stuff. <laughs> I feel better today anyways. Okay, so that's all I'm gonna do. I'm gonna leave it 
about here. But I'm going to go back now and do this side so I see this little piece sticking out here. And then I see this piece that kind of comes up. Now, right now, you're just watching, okay? You're just watching. And what I want you to do before you start to draw is I want you to go outside and look on the sidewalk or in the yard for a fallen branch. And I want you to draw yours. I don't want you to draw mine. I'm not going to give you a reference image or anything like that because I want you to draw your branch. Okay, so I'm pretty happy with this. Now, before I take this away, what I want to do is I want to look around and make sure there aren't any, like, markings that I really want to have on here. So here, for this particular branch, I see sort of this dark spot, so I'll just sort of fill that in with pencil. And it's a little bit dark here and here. So I look at any really dark places, and I'm just sort of filling that in with my pencil. And we'll paint right over it, and that's fine. <clears throat> so you're going to find your own, and you're going to do this drawing, just like I'm doing it with mine, on your own branch. And I wouldn't make it any bigger than this. I would try to find something like this, or even a little smaller would be fine. Come down here, I do see this is darker. It's darker here and up here. And it's darker in here. See, I'm just sort of filling in the dark spots with my pencil. Okay. This is a very, very basic drawing of this branch. We're not trying to put details in it with graphite. We're just trying to give ourselves sort of a map to follow when we paint it, okay? So I'm gonna set this aside, but not too far. I wanna always be looking at it. And for me, I like to paint um, sort of in a, in a up and down way. So I'm gonna turn my paper a little bit. Hopefully you can still see all of that. Let me see here, yeah. Okay, so I'm gonna be using uh, my number four brush to, to begin. And actually, before we even start painting, let's take our kneaded eraser. So once we've made a drawing like this with a number two pencil, what we want to do is take our kneaded eraser and just press it over the whole drawing. <coughs> I'm just pressing it. I'm not rubbing it or really erasing it. All this does is removes any extra graphite that I have. So when I'm painting it, the graphite won't mix with the watercolor, and that's it, okay? Also, if you make a mistake during your drawing, if you feel like you've made a mistake and you want to erase it, then, then the eraser is obviously there for that too. Something on my paper, and I don't know what it is. Okay. All right, so we're gonna start with our bigger brush, or any smaller pointed round is fine. And I'm going to look in my palette, and I'm going to choose a few colors, all right, to mimic what I see here. And I know I'm going to start with Cien Brulee, because I know I can make a very cool brown with Cien Brulee and a little bit of Blue Premier. And... You're wondering, you're probably wondering why I wouldn't just go to the raw umber. Well, for a couple reasons. One is by mixing these two colors, the Sam Brulee and the Blue Premier, I'm going to get a really interesting color that will separate a little bit when I paint with it. Okay? And I'm going to just make a test mark here on my paper. So it's a little bit. I'm going to put a little bit, it's a little bit on the green side, okay, so the, the premiere. So I'm going to add just a touch more of the Cien Brulee. That's better. 
that's just what I want. Okay, so it's a really beautiful sort of cool gray. <clears throat> so we're going to start with that. And I'm going to make actually a little bit more of that. A little bit stronger. So I'm putting more of the Sien Brulee. And then I'm going to add the Blue Premier in little bits until I, I get sort of that same color. Now, once I have that same color, I'm going to take some of the raw umber, so any kind of dark brown, and add it into it. So I've got a really, really dark brown, maybe a little more blue premiere. And I'm going to test that as well. So now I have one that's a little bit more brown. Do you see that? Okay. Now, <clears throat> We're going to start at the top of our branch, and we're not going to so much look at it as far as details yet, okay? But what we are going to look at is where it's light and where it's dark. So if I put this down on my paper, um, basically it's lighter in the center and darker along the edges, and on mine it's darker along the right edge, okay? So we're going to we're going to use that as a guide and. It's pretty safe to say that any time <clears throat> that we're doing sort of a still life or a bird on a branch or something like that, we're going to have a light source, okay? And if the light is coming from the top left, the left-hand side of our branch is going to be lighter than the right side because the right side will be in shadow. So we're going to we're going to keep that in mind no matter no matter what your branch looks like because it's it's tricky sometimes inside because we have multiple light sources. Right now I have a light coming from the upper left and a, right coming, a light coming from the upper right, so my light source is confusing and I'm not seeing a clear shadow. So we're gonna make our light source coming from the top left, so the left-hand side will be lighter, the right-hand side will be darker. All right, so I'm gonna <clears throat> move my palette here and I'm gonna start with a water glaze, okay? And I'm gonna use clear water and I'm going to put clear water down on my branch. And I'm not going to go very far. And I'm paying mind to the edges, but not crazy. Okay, I'm just putting clear water down for a small section of that branch. Going over it again, making sure it's a nice, good water glaze, not too wet and pooling. We don't want pools of water. I'm going to pick up that first Sam Brulee and Blue Premier mix, and I'm going to drop it in all along, okay? Then I'm going to rinse my brush and dry it off, and I'm going to coax that color to the edges. And I can use the tip of my brush to go right up to those kind of awkward pencil lines that we made that's, that aren't completely smooth. They're a little bit jumpy and bumpy. And I can do that with my, the tip of my pencil. Okay? And then I'm going to pick up some of the darker, and I'm going to drop it in along this bottom edge very carefully. And I'm just going to let it spread, okay? This little bit up here is a little bit darker, so I'll add some dark up there too. And we're just going to let those colors mix and mingle and spread. All right. Then I'm going to come back with clear water, just clear water, and just drop it in every now and then. See, I'm just touching it with clear water. So what that does is it pushes the pigments around and it starts to give us naturally this texture that we see on twigs, okay, with these little round areas and lines. It naturally did that. Let me hold that up for you so you can see. Okay? And now we're going to move down a little bit farther. So I'm going to pick up some clear water and put a water glaze down. It's okay if I touch the other paint. And I'm going to bring it all the way down to where it meets the main twig. Wipe over it to make sure I don't have puddles. Pick up my lighter color, drop it in, rinse my brush, 
and then coax it to the edges. By doing that, we're avoiding hard edge water lines. Okay, pick up the darker brown, drop it in along the bottom edge. Okay, all right, now, once we get over to this, our, sh our shadow's gonna be a little different. So this, this here, the light is hitting it here, so the top part of it is going to be lighter. The bottom part is going to be darker. This is more straight up and down, so this top edge is going to be lighter and this edge is going to be darker. Okay? Same thing, take water glaze, put it down. I'm going to take it right to this section. I'm not going to paint over that section where we drew the little circle because that's a detail I want to save. So if your branch has a little bit of moss, it might not. <clears throat> but if it does, just leave that part and don't paint it when you're doing this first step. We'll leave that for later. All right, picking up some of my first brown, dropping it in, drying my brush off and coaxing it <clears throat> to the edges. A little bit more. So when I'm coaxing it to the edges, I'm using the tip of my brush. Okay, pick up the darker, <clears throat> drop it in a little bit here, and definitely all along this underside, and just letting it spread. <clears throat> if I've got a little bump that comes out here, I might add a little darkness there too, okay? <clears throat> if it ever doesn't start flowing to the edge, you can always take the tip of your brush and coax the darker paint to the edge too, all right? I'm going to skip over this little section of moss, put my water glaze down. And I'm going to do this about two inches to about here. Okay, pick up my lighter brown, drop it in, rinse my brush, dry it off, <clears throat> coax it to the edges. So this is our first layer. Okay, pick up the darker brown, drop it along the bottom edge. Let it flow. <clears throat> Alright, starting down here, I'm going to do it one more time all the way to this section here because I've got something else that's a little bit different than the rest of the branch, so I want to leave that. <clears throat> we'll paint that separately. Pick up my lighter brown, drop it in, coax it to the edge. <clears throat> when I say coax it to the edge, I'm just sort of dragging my brush along the sides and the paint sort of follows it, giving me a nice soft edge <clears throat> instead of painting a hard edge right, right up next to it. Darker brown, drop it along the underside. And then sometimes we need to coax that to the edge too. Okay, I'm gonna skip over this part right here, and I'm going to finish off. <clears throat> Water glaze. Go over it again to make sure I don't have any puddles. Puddles do not help paint flow. Lighter brown. Coax it to the edge. Darker brown, drop it in along the bottom side.
Okay, so now we're going to let this first layer dry completely. <clears throat> While it's drying, um, I'm going to go ahead and mix up more of both of those colors. So the Siem Brulee and the Blue Premier. And also the Siem Brulee Blue Premier and a little bit of Raw Umber. And then I will be back. Okay, so this layer is now dry. And we're going to add some of those other details that we saw on the places that we skipped around first. So I'm going to take my brush, my, this is my number two pointed round, so a little bit smaller. If you only have a four, that's fine. If you have a three, that's fine. You're just going to use the very tip of it, okay? And the inside of this branch, on mine anyways, is sort of a burnt sienna color. So I'm just going to take some sienna brulee, and I'm just going to paint that circle where I see it. Your, yours may not have that, so you may not need to do it. But this is how you do it if there are other colors involved. Then I see the little bit of moss, so I'm going to take some viridian, so any kind of a green, and I'm going to put it in my palette so it's nice and fluid. I don't want it to be straight from the pan and really dark. Maybe even add a little bit of water to it. Okay. And I'm going to paint in the green. And it comes a little bit on top here and underneath. And it's okay if it mixes and mingles with the other colors, it's fine. But a little bit of that. And then on the other side, it's really just the same color as the rest of the branch. So I'm going to take my brush into that lighter mix that we made and just sort of paint that in, okay? So I've got that little bit of detail now. So down here, I have a similar situation without moss, so I'm gonna take some of the Sam Brulee again, and I'm gonna paint where I see the lighter colors. Just add some Sam Brulee on either side of this little piece that's sticking out. So if you see something different in your branch, this is how you do it. You just try to mimic the color Okay, and then the top of it has got this little tiny knot. I'm going to put a little bit of yellow ochre in the top, and then the rest of it is that same um, brown as the rest of the branch. So I'm just going to just sort of draw in some little lines where I see that darker color. And again, your branch may not have these, and that's fine. So you won't need to do this part. But if you do have some little bits of moss, that's how you do it. Just add in some color. Okay, so those are done. Now we're going to get back to our main branch. And what we're going to do is we're going to do the same step over again. Okay, so <clears throat> the thing is though, is we already have these dark bits in. So we're going to focus more on just putting a nice glaze over the whole thing. So I'm going to take, I mixed up more of that Sam Brulee and Blue Premier, but I'm going to add a little bit more Sam Brulee this time so it's a little bit warmer. Okay, so it's more of a warm brown. And I'll show you how that looks here. It's got plenty of water in it because I want it to be nice and light. So here's our, our original browns, and this one is just a little bit lighter and warmer because I added a bit of Sam Brulee to it, okay? So we're going to do the same thing as we did before. We're going to use a water glaze, all right, <clears throat> and then we're going to drop in that Sam Brulee. So I'm going to put my water glaze down right over what I've painted before, just doing it one section at a time. I'm going to do this whole section because I'm only using one color. Dry my brush off, make sure that I don't have any pooling. Okay, pick up that warmer brown and just drop it in toward the center. And I'm just letting it sort of mix and mingle with everything else that I have there already just dropping it in and that's all I'm gonna do I'm not gonna touch it anymore I'm not gonna clean up my edges or anything <clears throat> if 
you accidentally go to the edge and you feel like you need to clean up your edges, you can always take the tip of your brush and just sort of coax it out to that edge and clean them up. <clears throat> All right, now I'm gonna continue down the branch. So I'm gonna go right up to where that section is that we painted with the moss, that I painted with the moss. And then once again, <clears throat> Starting at the top, I'm just going to drop in that warmer brown in the center and let it just move out on its own. All right. <clears throat> By doing this, we're creating we're creating dimension and volume and texture. Okay, we're creating layers of, of browns that mimic tree bark. <clears throat> then I'm going to continue down, skipping over where I put the green and the burnt sienna. Giving myself a nice smooth water glaze. Picking up that warmer brown. Just dropping it in. Okay. Continuing down with my water glaze. Stopping where I painted those few details. <clears throat> Making sure that my water glaze is nice. Going all the way up to the edges. Taking that warmer brown and dropping it in. <clears throat> then I'm going to continue down here below those details that I added. Warmer the warmer brown and just dropping it in. All right, <clears throat> so sometimes when I'm at this stage, I might take another color like Blue Premier and just mix some blue up in my palette so it's nice and light and fluid and take the tip of my brush <clears throat> and maybe I'll just drop in a tiny bit of blue here and there, just a little bit where it's wet, just to give it some beauty. <laughs> I mean, the branch isn't blue, but, but just by dropping in little touches of that color here and there, it will mix and mingle with everything else. And just gives it a little bit of interest. So you can do that on any branch with any color you want. I tend to use blue. I just think it mixes with the with the other colors really nicely. All right. So at this point, we have to let our branch dry again. Okay. Our final step is that we're going to come back and we're going to use our small brush again to add in some really dark brown and to put some finishing touches on these little areas of detail that we had. And then we'll also use some pencil. So let this layer dry again and then we'll be back to finish. Okay, so we are ready now to start adding in the details to our branch. And I'm going to be using my number two pointed round, so the smallest pointed round that you have is perfect. You could even use a one or a zero if you wanted to, um, whatever you're comfortable with. And <clears throat> I'm going to use the, the um, raw umber straight from the pan for this, okay? Because I want it to be really dark. And I'm just going to wet my brush and put some water into my raw umber. Or if you have it on a palette, that's fine. You just want to use it just fairly dark. And we're going to look at our branch and we're going to notice any places where there's texture. And, and really all I'm doing is maybe putting in a few little dots here and there. Maybe along the edges or some little stripes across if I see stripes. And I'm just going to kind of comb over My branch. This is a very subtle thing. We're not doing a lot of texture, you know, like really f fine, fine detail, but we're just adding in little bits where we see some darkness. So I'm noticing on my branch that it has little dots on it, you know, sometimes little circles. 
and sometimes it has little stripes, especially where um, the branch bends or meets, like this one when it meets the, the main branch, there's some darkness there. <clears throat> and so I'm just using the tip just to add in a tiny little bit where I see it. Here there's like darkness along this side, so I'm making it a little darker. And there's some little texture at the ends. So this is going to be different for every branch that you do. And this is the fun part because we really get to study it. Like here around this mossy bed, it's a little bit darker. So I'm sort of outlining that and around this circle. And along the inside a little bit. This is fun. This is the fun part. little dots and little stripes, little branchy textures. And this is sort of intuitive, you know? I mean, we're, we're using our eyes and we're using our paintbrush through our hand as an extension of what our eyes see. See, I'm just making little tick marks with my paintbrush. Here where they come together. This part's a little darker, so I'm going to make it darker. And I'm just enhancing what's already there. When I come down here, I've got some really dark areas along the inside where that burnt sienna is. And I'll add some little dots in there to soften it. Really dark. No matter what you do, keep it light and simple, and it's going to look great. You don't want to overdo it. There. Now, up here where I've got the moss, I noticed that the moss had some little spots in it too, so I'll take my brush with my umber and I'll go in and just make a few little tick marks. To make it more realistic looking. <clears throat> okay, so that is really all I do for a branch. Um, the, the most narrow branch or even the trunk of a tree, it's all really the same process. I start with a water glaze, I drop in a lighter brown and then a darker brown along the edges. That gives it some roundness, okay? And then I come back and I put a wash on the whole thing. I put a water glaze and I drop the medium warmer brown in the center and I might dot on a little bit of a third color like a blue or a purple or you know even gold if you want to get fancy right um, and then you also want to pay attention because sometimes our branches are more gray than brown okay so let's say I get this far and I say well you know what this branch this branch in real life it's probably not as colorful as on camera but in real life they're fairly similar here and <clears throat> um, it is definitely a brown with some warmer brown areas but let's say we have a branch that's, um, like this one is a very, very chestnutty brown. So I could go on top of this again with just like a burnt sienna glaze. So I'll do this part up here. And I would just take really watered down burnt sienna and I would put a glaze on top of it. So I'm still going to see all of those beautiful textural marks and variations that I put on, but it's going to give my branch a warm cast. The same is true for down here. I can take Blue Premier with just a little touch of Sam Brulee or one of the browns that we used in our branch and I can use that as a glaze. So it's, a glaze contains tons of water. So it's very transparent. And by painting over, over it with that, it's going to cool it down and make it more of a gray brown. So those final glazes can do a lot. The other thing final glazes do 
is that they they sort of unify everything and they soften all of those details that we put on. So we still see them, but they become even more natural looking. I can put this right over here and just continue all the way down. So you can see how it turned this one a little bit cooler and then up here it's a little bit warmer. And sometimes even within the same branch, we have different variations of cool and warm. So final glaze is something you could always do as well. It's not absolutely necessary, but sometimes it's really fun to do. So those are my steps for creating realistic looking branches. Um, I use them all the time in my paintings. I use them when I do floral arrangement paintings like still lifes. I use them to put birds on. So if I was painting a bird, the bird might be sitting right here. And that's how I would paint my branch, okay? Now, I will say, um, this is a very basic form of it. And so sometimes if I'm doing something really, really realistic and refined, I'll take a lot more time with this and I'll really pay attention to um, every little detail that I see. And I do that sometimes as well. And sometimes I'll actually put three layers of glazes so I get even more roundness. It just depends. So, but these are the basic steps and you can take them as far as you want to. These are the techniques. The, the, the techniques are the same no matter what. The more you practice it, the more you spend time looking at branches and trying to mimic what you see, the better and more realistic they will get. So this is really a project for everyone. Anyone can do this, I promise you. Um, but it's a great step into more realistic botanical style painting. So I hope you enjoyed this. I really appreciate you being here. Um, as always, I welcome you to join us on Patreon where we do even more. Um, every week there are three or four videos on Patreon, inc including the YouTube video that I do. And <clears throat> we're just having a great time there. People are just soaring. I'm so proud of what everyone is doing there. So anyhow, thank you very much. I hope you're having a great day, and I will see you next week with a dandelion lesson. Take care.